This is Gordy and the story of the wild flying feathers. Gordy was enjoying his time outside. He loved playing in the garden and he was playing with his friend Sam. Sam said, did you know that in our school there is a boy who is always doing bad stuff. Every time something goes wrong, like something happens in school, it's always his fault. The, um, the janitor always has to clean up spills that are his fault because he's just so stupid and clumsy. Gordy said, no, how stupid is that? Gordy um, finished playing with Sam and they went, he went home. Now, at dinner time, Gordy was telling Daddy, did you know in Sam's school there's a boy who's always doing bad things and he's always causing messes and he's always making problems for other people. He's not listening to the teachers, he's spilling things, he's doing stupid things. Gordy's dad said, well, how do you know this? Have you met the little boy? No, said Gordy. Sam told me. Well, does Sam know? Has he talked to the little boy? I don't know, said Gordy. Gordy's daddy said, It's very important when you hear a story from somebody that you always find out the truth about it from the person that is in the story. Because if you don't, and you just retell the story, that's gossip. And God doesn't like gossip because it hurts people. Gordy's daddy said, you might find out that that little boy, maybe his mommy and daddy don't have enough money to buy him enough food, so he's actually hungry during lunchtime. And because he's hungry, he can't think properly. And he's not thinking properly, and he might be even a little bit shaky because he's not very strong, and maybe that's why he's spilling things. Maybe that's why he's not listening in school. You don't know what's happening. It's not very nice to retell stories about people when you don't know for sure why they're acting that way. And if you do retell it, it's gossip, and God doesn't like gossip. Oh, said Gordy. I never thought about that. Yes, said Daddy, it's very important. Now I'll tell you a story, said Daddy, to put this in context. This is a story of a very um, gossipy man. He owned a big shop that sold candles, and everybody in the village needed candles because they didn't have electricity back then. In his candle shop, Everybody would come and tell their stories. This person did this to me. That person did that to me. Did you know about this? Oh, have you heard about that? And the man would tell the stories to the other customers that would come. Did you hear about the man who did this? Did you hear about the woman who did that? The stories went flying everywhere. One day, a man came in so angry. He said, you stupid candle maker, what have you done? My whole business and reputation is destroyed because someone's come into this place and heard your story about me. The man was shocked. He didn't even know who this man was. What are you talking about? I don't know you. I haven't told stories about you. Oh, yes? Then who told the story about me? cheating and doing underhanded dirty work for this person. The man said, but that was a true story. Someone else told it to me and I retold it to everyone else. He said, it's not a true story. Listen to this. And the man told him what really happened. And the candle maker was so shocked because he realized that that man was actually right. And the story that he was retelling to everyone was very wrong and had ruined this man's reputation. The candle maker was shocked and he thought, what can I possibly do to make this right? You can't do anything, said the man. The, my reputation's been ruined and this has gone like wildfire. Everybody's talking about it. 
I'll have to move to another place. I'll have to move to another village where no one knows about me. My business is ruined because of you. And he left. The candle maker felt so bad. He went to, um, he went to a pastor that lived down the street. And that was where he went to church too. And he said, what should I do? The man, the pastor, thought very hard and said, go bring, there's a pillow in the other room on the settee. Bring it here, please. He brought the pillow and the man, the candle man, was so curious. He thought, what on earth is he going to do with a pillow? He took scissors and cut the end of the pillow, a huge hole in it. And he said, go scatter these feathers everywhere in my office and open the window too and turn the fan on. Now, the candle maker thought this man must be absolutely out of his mind crazy, but he did what he was told. He spread the feathers out, he opened and pounded them around, turned the fan and opened the window. Feathers went flying everywhere. It was like a tornado of feathers. Everything was covered in feathers and lots of feathers went out the window. Then the pastor said, now I want you to take each feather one by one and put it back in the pillow and sew it up so it's exactly like it was before. The candle maker was shocked. He said, that's impossible. We've opened the windows. Feathers have gone out the windows. Feathers have been squished flat um, under our feet. Feathers have gone into the rubbish bin, into little cracks, into the floorboards. They're, they it can't put them all back. We can't get them all out. And the man said, the pastor said, yes, and this is exactly the same with a rumor. When you retell a story about somebody, and you might have even known about the story firsthand, maybe you even had something happen to you. But if you're angry about something and you don't know why it's happened, Maybe you don't know why that person is acting that way to you. Then it's gossip if you retell the story. And God doesn't like gossip. Well, what should I do, said the man. There's nothing you can do. Just go home and stop gossiping. The candle maker was so sad because he had ruined this man's reputation and he had been gossiping for years and years and years. And he was thinking, what can I do to gossip, to stop gossiping? Because everybody comes into my shop and tells me all these stories. Mm, don't tell anyone what they then he got you. an idea. The candle maker, instead of just listening to everybody else's stories, he made them aware. When they came into his shop to tell him stories, he said, Now, are you sure that's the way it is? Have you thought about the other person? Why they're acting that way? Maybe something very bad has happened in their life. And instead of telling the story about how grumpy you are about this thing, instead of doing that, why don't you pray for that man? Or pray for that woman? They must be going through a terrible time if they're acting so bad to you. They must be. So you should pray for them to have wisdom to be helped, for God to know, um, for God to talk to them and help them with their problem and maybe you can help them with their problem. And that man took that little tiny incident of gossiping too much, turned it around and he became one of the wisest men in the village. Everybody would come to them, come to him because he started believing that him stopping the gossip and turning it around would change people and it did and the whole village stopped gossiping and instead when people had problems and were angry at each other and bad things were happening they would stop take a deep breath calm down and they would pray and that changed everyone in the village yes Hi. Gordy heard that story and he knew that he shouldn't have retold the story about that little boy because he didn't know what was happening. But Gordy thought, well, I can be like the candlestick man. I'm going to pray, said Gordy. Tonight I'm going to pray for that little boy. I don't know his name. I don't know where he lives. I don't know anything about him. All I know is that he is 
spilling things and not listening in class. I'm going to start praying for him. Good boy, said Daddy. That's exactly what you should do. Now, how about a kiss? Gordy kissed Daddy on the cheek, and Daddy gave Gordy a big, snuggly hug. Off you go, you little monkey. I'm not a monkey, said Gordy. I'm a gorilla. Oh, how could I forget, said Daddy. Up you go to bed, gorilla. I'll see you in the morning. Good night, Daddy, said Gordy, and up he went to bed. And that was the end.